In this tutorial, we are going to add a script to our input sheet here where we add in some data here and hit our submit button and it will check that all the data has been added and then add it to our data log here and then clear the ranges here. So for example, if I use the data here, so if I select from this drop down menu for EV3, type in 35 kilometers and then type in 0.0189 or 1.89% 1 and hit submit, you can see the script's running. We get a success item added to the log. We go over and check our log and we can see here that we've added in our data. No worries. If you want to play along and you're starting from this current tutorial, there is a link to the Google Sheet in the description below that will get you to this stage in the script. If you're playing along from the previous tutorial, then you can follow along directly from here. At this stage, we currently have data validation for each one of these cells. So we have a drop down menu here. We've got data validation between 0 and 950Ks, as you can see with this error here. And then we've got data validation between 0 and 1 for a decimal point. So if I put in 2 here, that is our data validation. In our submit button, we have a assigned script to this append ev log function. And if we have a look in our app script here, we have our append ev log function ready to go for us to put in our script. Let's get cracking. Cool, let's go ahead and get rid of this comment hint. And the first thing we need to do is grab our spreadsheet. So let's create the variables ss for spreadsheet and it's a constant, it won't change, equals ss, spreadsheet, spreadsheet app, get active, spreadsheet, and that is the get active spreadsheet method, so we need some brackets on there, and a semicolon, and now we need to collect our data, so we'll make a note here, we'll make a comment here, Select the data. Hit enter, new line, and first, uh, our next constant variable is going to be the source range. So const source equals ss for spreadsheet. So we're referencing this spreadsheet here. And we are going to use the get range by name method. We're going to get a range by a named range. So we're going to open up our brackets here and we're going to put in this input data range here. So let's even just click on that and edit it so we can select it, hit control C, bring it across, add in double quotation marks and control V to enter. Now we know we haven't made a mistake with that. All right, so from that we need the values from that range. So let's create another constant variable, const source vals equals and then now we're going to reference our source range dot get values and that's going to grab the values so let's have a look at that just for now and see what we get so let's go a console dot log and add in our source values let's run the script and we'll need to run through authorization for the first time. Cool. So after that run, that gave us a 2D array and we can see that each row is a 2D array where there's an outer array of the range and inside the range there is another array containing a value in each one of these rows here. And we're drawing that from our import data range here. So when we append our data, we're going to use the append row function and that just takes a single array. So we're gonna to have to do some tidying up here and we can just flatten this into a single array with the flat method. Cool, so if we run that again now, we now have a flat single array with all our values in it. Okay, let's get rid of that console log. And the next thing we need to do is to check if the cells have all been filled out. So if we head back over here, if one of these cells is missing some data or is empty, we don't want the process to run in the script. So how do we handle this? So first let's uh, put in a comment and we'll call it validate. All cells are filled. 
and we'll create a variable any empty cell equals and now we're going to collect these source values and we want to check if there's any cell that's empty there's a number of ways to do this but I'm going to use the find index method find index and what this method does is allows you to search for a parameter in an array and if that parameter exists it'll give you the index of that array so if we have a look at our log here if I said I wanted to find 10 then the index of the 10 would be 0 1 so the, it will return 1 if I wanted to find 80 well in this array there there is no 80 so it's going to return minus 1 so let's complete this function so let's open up brackets and the find index takes a function as an argument and we're going to use an arrow function here so we'll call our parameter cell and that's the uh, cell we're going to iterate through and that cell is equal to an empty string let's go back to our execution log so cell means each one of these values so that's cell and then it'll iterate through and check to see if that's empty and then it'll iterate through again and check to see if that cell has uh, no values in it and then it'll iterate to this last value and check to see if there's no values in it okay so now we can say if any empty cell is not equal to minus one now remember if our find index can't find a value it's going to return minus one in our any empty cell so if any empty cell does not equal minus one so that means there is an empty cell somewhere within our array then we don't want the script to run so we want to return this script and also provide a, a message to our users to say hey something's going on you're missing some data so we can do this with the alert method inside the spreadsheet app UI so let's grab that for now so we go const UI equals spreadsheet app dot get UI and that grabs our UI and then we can go UI dot alert this can take a single parameter or three parameters we're going to use the three parameter approach here so our first parameter is going to be the header for the alert so it is input incomplete let's put a comma down for our next parameter and if we just arrow down you'll see the prompt string in our double quotation marks please enter a value in all capital letters because we're angry input cells before submitting we'll avoid putting an exclamation mark in there even though we are furious right now okay and then we need to add a button so in this case it will call the UI and then grab the button set property and set that button to okay nice that's our alert done and all we want to do now is return Control S to save and let's test this out so we've got an empty piece of data in here let's hit submit and see if everything worked great so now we've got an error input complete please enter a value in all input cell input cells let's change that input cells okay nice however if there is no empty cells we want to process this data so let's move on to this next step put in a semicolon here to tidy things up and before we put our data into our data log we add, need to add the date timestamp and the editor as an email we can save our users a bit of time by doing this programmatically for them instead of them having to enter this in so let's get cracking with this so let's make a note gather current DTS for date timestamp and user email okay so this is a fairly easy process so the first thing we want is the date so const date equals new date using the new date JavaScript constructor next we need the email of the user so we can go const email and here we can use the Google App Script session class and this class allows us to get the active user and then from that active user we can get the email 
Now this requires another uh, scope of permissions, but when they run through the permissions the first time, that'll escape that scope. Okay, so now we've got the date and the email we can incorporate into our data. So let's combine our data together now. So let's go const data equals, we'll create a new array. And first of all, in our array, we'll add date and then the email. And then we're going to use the spread syntax to spread out our source values in the last part of this array. So source values here. So if we console log that, log our data, you'll be able to see what it looks like. And let's head over and actually add in some data here. So distance in kilometers, 35. We'll just copy this over here. Hit Control C, Control Shift V, so we don't mess up the formatting. And let's just run the script from here. So hit Control S to save, and then run. Remember, we're adding a new scope here with this session, so we'll have to do another permissions this time. And now you can see our date's been added in, and then it, we've got our email, and then we've got the three items that we've collected from here. All right, so our next task is to finally append the data to our data log. So we're going to take this and add it to the bottom here. So let's make a note with a comment, append the data. Add extra space in there for prettiness. Okay, so we'll go const. And this time we want the destination sheet. So we'll call it destination. equals spreadsheet ss so we're referencing this spreadsheet up the top here and then we want to get the sheet name this time so we'll say get sheet by name and the sheet name is the data log over here so let's double click that hit control c to copy and get double quotations up and control v to paste so now we've we're inside the sheet and now we need to append the row inside the sheet so let's go destination sheet dot append row and what do we want to append it with our data so we hit control c to copy and control v to paste and that's our data okay cool so that's all basically done there's a couple of small things that we can do to finish things up to make things uh, a nice and tidy so let's head back over to our data log and here when we hit submit and run the data and add the data into the bottom here we want to clear this range as well so they can add in another set of data for the, to input into the log. So let's do that. And we'll comment clear the source sheet rows. And to do that, we can grab our source range again. And we can use the clear content content method. Now, be careful, don't use the clear method because that's going to get rid of all the formatting as well. We just want the content and data validation. So just clear out the content only. And after that, let's, uh, let's just let the user know that everything's been completed successfully. So let's type in SS for our spreadsheet to access our spreadsheet. And we can use the toast method to create a little pop-up that'll pop up somewhere around here and let us know that everything is hunky-dory. Let's put in our comment in our toast. Success! Yeah, legends. Item added to the data log. This Now it's time for an exclamation mark, a happy exclamation mark. Cool. All right. Now's the moment of truth. Did we make any mistakes? Let's hit Control S to save. Let's go back over to our sheet here. Let's uh, get rid of this charge use value. Hit submit. Oh no, please enter a value in all input cells before submitting. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So let's just Control C over here, Control Shift V, paste there. Now let's submit. Oh, look over here, success, an item added to the data log. Let's check it out. And you can see here, our item has been added to the data log. Let's just double click to widen that out a bit. You can share this input sheet with another user. So let's uh, do that quickly now. And I've added an editor, Mrs. Yagi-san Atade. 
So let's jump over to her account. And let's just jump over to her account. And here she is over here in the data log. She heads over to the input sheet. Now this is the first time she's used this sheet. So she tries to put in some data here. She reads the instructions, goes, oh, okay, I might have to do some authorization. If she doesn't know too much about that, she can click on the link and learn some more. If she's comfortable, she can continue adding in our data. So she's going to select EV2. And let's say she's done 449 kilometers and she's entering in 0 0.5. 0.89 for her charge used and she hits enter oh we've got a mistake 0 0.5089 of a charge used Let's hit enter now yep everything's working out well um, if she hits submit do you have to run through authorization for the first time and she'll then have to click the button one more time for the script to run Success, an item added to the data log. Okay, let's just check. And there she is there with all her new data. Again, if she puts, uh, if she misses an item, she's still gonna get the same error. And if she adds consecutive values, she doesn't have to run through author authorization. Okay, so that's it. You've just made an input sheet. It's been a long journey, but you've managed to make a stylistic input sheet that has data validation, hints and examples, and then runs through scripts and adds extra information like the date and the user's ID and adds it into the data log. Well done. So a couple of things before we continue. So right now, there's a couple of cases where the user may love to copy and paste in information. So if I hit Control C here and hit Control V here, we can see that now, there is a green 35 in there instead of our lovely gray background. If we right click and check out our data validation, we can see that our data validation is also gone from there. Again, we could do the same over here and hit Control V just to simply paste and bam, our background formatting and all our lovely data validation has been ruined this time. So in the next tutorial, we're going to cover how to programmatically with Google Apps Scripts update the data validation after a set of values has been submitted. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, please click that like button. If you want to see the next tutorial and get a notification when it comes out, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time.